Hello everyone. In this video, we'll discuss about balancing of several masses in different planes. To derive the equations, we have assumed that there is a rotor which is rotating or revolving with some angular, uniform angular velocity, omega radian per second, and there are three masses attached to it. You can use four, five, two, any number of masses. Right, so for uh, derivation, we have used three masses, and we are saying that the unbalanced forces in the plane of reference they are acting outwards. So for rotating masses, right, so for like any number of rotating masses, the centrifugal force it acts outward, which is actually the unbalanced force. And if we want to achieve the dynamic balancing, the two things that we have to ensure is that the resultant of forces it should be equal to zero. And the resultant of couple, it should also be zero for the system. If these two conditions are satisfied, that means the system is dynamically balanced. So let's assume this is the rotor which is fixed at ends, and it is rotating with some angular velocity omega. It has got three masses m1, the point masses uh, at radial distance r1, m2 at radial distance r2, and m3 at some radial distance r3. And their angular positions are also known, which are taken counterclockwise from the reference x-axis. So theta one for mass one, theta two for mass two, and theta three for mass three. And we've also taken this plane C one as some reference plane, and we say that the distance of mass one from this reference plane is L one. Similarly for mass two, and similarly for mass three, L two and L three. Now, if the system would have been dynamically balanced. The resultant of forces, which is m1 r1 omega square plus m2 r2 omega square plus m3 r3 omega square, would have been zero. That means summation of forces is equal to zero, and the summation of couples would have been zero, which is m1 r1 l1 omega square plus m2 r2 l2 omega square and m3 l3 r3 omega square. So if these conditions would have been satisfied by these three masses which are attached to a rotor the condition the system would have been dynamically balanced but these two conditions are not satisfied maybe both of them or any one of them especially this count uh, resultant of couple is not equal to zero because these masses they are lying in different planes so what can be done the possibility is the addition of counter masses so we have added two counter masses in two different planes lying at the two ends of the rotor so let's say the first plane is c1 and the second plane is c2 now in this derivation we have to find out the magnitude of these masses m1 and m2 and the angle at which they are to be placed so we know the condition it would be for the summation of forces should be equal to zero that means and because omega will be repeated again and again and it is same for all the masses so we will skip it so if we say that summation of forces should be equal to zero that means summation of mr plus first mass first counter mass which is mc1 rc1 plus mc2 rc2 it should be equal to zero now if the resultant of forces is zero their horizontal and vertical component should also be zero right so summation of mr cos theta plus mc1 rc1 cos theta c1 and we say that c1 the mass at c1 is at angle some angle theta c1 and mc2 rc2 cos theta c2 where c2 has some random angle theta c2 that we have to calculate in this like we have to find the equation to calculate this value of angle right similarly this equation also holds true for its vertical component for the sine value right now see if you look at the equations a and b there are two equations and there are four unknowns mc1 mc2 theta c1 and theta c2 so it is not possible to solve these equations so we will go to the next part which is to solve the couples the second equation which is the resultant of couple is equal to zero now why we can solve the second equation first because if we take this c1 as the reference plane so the moment about c1 will be equal to zero and then we'll get two equations and two unknowns so we'll be able to find the value of mc2 and theta c2 
so for the moments the equation becomes m1 r1 l1 omega square plus m2 r2 l2 omega square plus m3 r3 l3 omega square and mc2 rc2 lc2 omega square because the distance of l the distance of mass mc1 from plane c1 is zero so this factor will be skipped it will not be used so what is the equation it is the summation of mrl plus mc2 rc2 lc2 is equal to zero if this equation holds true its vertical and horizontal components will also hold true so what we do we keep the summation one factor on lhs and we take the another factor on right hand side so we can also write this equation as mc2 rc2 lc2 cos theta c2 is equal to minus of summation mrl cos theta and mc2 rc2 lc2 sin theta c2 is equal to minus of summation mrl sin theta both ways it's fine so because we are eventually squaring and adding these two equations so when we square these equations we get m square mc2 square rc2 square lc2 square and sin square theta c2 plus cos square theta c2 so sin square theta plus cos square theta is 1 so those that term will be multiplying the equation by 1 it won't make any difference so we'll be left with mc2 rc2 lc2 and on right hand side the square of these two factors right mrl cos theta mrl sin theta and their under root so by using this equation, we will be able to calculate the mass of the, count, the counter mass mc2. And if we divide the equations, these two equations, we will be left with, these two terms will get cancelled out and we will be left with sin theta c2 upon cos theta c2 which is nothing but 10 theta c2 and it is equal to these two factors. And it will help us in finding the value of theta. Now please do remember whenever you are writing these terms for sine and cos, whatever is the sine convention, whether it's positive or negative, please do write along with this whole term. Because here while calculating it, I got this fact, uh, this sine convention negative, so I placed negative. While solving the questions, whatever is the sine convention, we have to take it along with us because these sine conventions help us in finding that in which quadrant does this angle theta c2 lies, right? So with these two equations, we can calculate the value of mc2 and theta c2. Now we can go back to our equation a and b, right? Which said that summation of mr plus m1c1, sorry, mc1, rc1 plus mc2, rc2 was equal to 0. Right? So we'll break these two equations or we'll write these two equations for their sine and cos factors. We already know mc2 and theta c2. So there are only two unknowns which is mc1 and theta c1. So similarly like we did in this case what we'll do, we'll get two equations, one for cos and one for sine. We'll once square and add these two equations. So this mc1 square rc1 square it will be sine square theta plus cos square theta which will be 1. So mc1 rc1 will be this value and when we divide these equations a and b we get 10 theta c1 and by placing all the values we will get the angle of theta c1. Again you have to keep in mind whatever are the sine conventions for the sine factor and the cos factor because this helps us in finding the a quadrant in which the angle lies. Now this question can also be solved by the graphical method. So we have taken the same diagrams that we used earlier for the analytical method, right? And in the question we are already given theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3. So we'll start with the couple triangle because there will be two unknowns and two equations, right? So, you know the value of M1, R1, L1. Now, this M1, R1, L1, even though the couple acts in the direction perpendicular to that of the force, but while solving the questions or while doing the balancing problems, we keep uh, the uh, direction of the force and the couple same, right? So, what we'll do for whatever value we calculate for M1, R1, L1, we take a proper scale, right? And we draw a line parallel to this M1, 
right? So we have drawn a line parallel to M1, which is M1 R1 L1. Now from the head of M1, we'll draw another line, which is M2 R2 L2, which we have already calculated. And I've already told you what is L1, L2, L3 and L4, right? And we draw a line which is parallel to this position of M2. So this is what we get. Then we also know about our M3. So we draw a line parallel to this M3, which is M3, R3, L3. And whatever is the value left, it will give you MC2, RC2 and LC2. Right? You know, already in question, the value of the radial distance is given. So RC2 is known, LC2 is known. You can calculate the value of MC2. And to calculate the angle, we know what is the angle. We always calculate the angle from the tail of the vector. So from the tail, we draw the axis, right? The x-axis, which we are taken as reference. And we measure this angle in the counterclockwise direction. So this gives us the angle theta C2, right? So for drawing this vector diagram, it is always advisable to first draw this diagram showing the whole system so that we know the actual angles of the masses and you can always draw the lines parallel to this rather than drawing the angle again and again because if we don't draw these masses right according to their angles given so here while drawing the coupled triangle and the first triangle you'll have to take into consideration the angles also because what is the angle of the mass what is the position of the mass Parallel to that only we have to draw the vector for the force and the couple, right? So once we know the value of MC2 and RC2, we draw the force triangle. So again, the same process, we know what is M1, R1. We draw a line parallel to this M1, R1. From the head, we join the tail of M2, R2. Similarly for M3, R3 and MC2, whatever is left is M1, MC1, RC1. So you measure with scale what is MC1, RC1. RC1 is known, so we get the value of MC1. And again, from the tail, if we draw a horizontal line, the counterclockwise direction, if this is something like this, right, the counterclockwise direction, it gives us the angle of theta C1. And because these, these triangles are complete, we mean that by the addition or the introduction of these counter masses, the system is dynamically balanced. That means the resultant forces are zero and the resultant couples are also zero.